From the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, I'm Brad Smith. This morning, through our NASDAQ Spotlight discussion, we focus on renewable energy and the future for businesses with investment and product assets in the space. To discuss that further, we're joined by Jeff Tenenbaum, who's the chairman at S-Power. Jeff, great to have you here this morning. Thanks, Brad. Absolutely. For some of the Facebook viewers, tell us a little bit about S-Power. Sure. Well, there's lots of ways to invest and build solar businesses. Mm -hmm. The S-Power S -Power model is pretty simple. We typically buy large tracts of land, we get permits, and then we seek to enter into long-term contracts with you know, big utilities like a Con Ed for 20 years to sell them power. Um, on Long Island, we've got two of the largest solar farms in New York State. In California, we have, uh, outside of LA, a couple thousand acres that's powering a lot of the city of Los Angeles. Wow, that's amazing. And we've seen some of those pictures online, which I think we'll be showing throughout this segment to some of the Facebook viewers. But it's amazing to see kind of the scope of work yeah. that you guys lay out, um, and, and especially with regard to renewable energy. So, yeah. um, you know, even more in, in the forefront here, S-Power announced a pending sale for an enterprise value of approximately $1.6 billion to AES Corp. Uh, in Alberta Investment Management as well. I, didn't, I understand this is the largest sale in the history of, of this space. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, we've been told it's the largest sale of a, of a solar operating business wow. in the U.S. and, and globally. Yeah. And um, difficult decision for us in mm -hmm. terms of you know, why sell now. Um, I think uh, really we had a, a couple of decisions to make. Okay. First is ahead of the company's tremendous growth. Yeah. We've built out about two, two, two and a half billion dollars worth of projects. Wow. We think over the next five years that number could increase tenfold. Okay. So the amount of capital that's going to be required could be, um, you know, well north of ten billion dollars. Wow. So finding the right, the right group that could supply that capital mm -hmm. and could do it at a low cost was critical. Mm -hmm. uh, the firm I founded, Fertree, uh, is not the lowest capital cost provider, but I think that AES is a large utility. Uh, partnering with AIMCO, which is one of the largest pension funds, mm -hmm. will help ensure that the business can continue to grow and profit well into the future. So you would say that this is the right timing for this transaction um, and, and the right transaction to take place right now? I, I think that's right. Yep. And I think uh, you know, the additional benefits, um, uh, the future of, of solar and wind mm -hmm. is going to hinge very much on, on battery storage. Sure. AES is a leader in that area. They're pioneering a lot of technologies, which are great because Although we have a beautiful sunny day out in Times Square yeah. today, when the sun goes down, mm -hmm. uh, we lose our ability to power with solar. And when the wind stops blowing, we, lo we lose the, power, the ability to power with wind. Hmm. But storage will, will change that dramatically. Absolutely. Now, in, in a little more than three years, S-Power actually went from idea stage to being the largest private developer and owner of solar assets in the US. How, how did you attain that success okay. so quickly and that growth? <laughs> Good question. Um, Number one, patience. Okay. Um, we, we like industries that are transforming, mm -hmm. that have a lot going on because frequently there's opportunity, but there's also a lot of pain when sure. industries change. Yep. Now, the railroad industry started with 100, ended up with four. Right. Uh, the auto industry started with about 80, ended up with three. So we were circling the, the renewables industry for some time. Yeah. And 2013 is really when it aligned for us. And that was because so many people had lost money right. in renewables, they'd kind of given up. And as Buffett says, you know, when there's, you know, a lot of pessimism, that's really tends to be the best time to invest. So mm -hmm. that's when we started to uh, make the investment. Yeah. Then we found a great management team from outside the industry. They had managed nuclear waste. They did a fantastic job. Salute out to Salt Lake City and San Francisco, where they are. And we were very disciplined into sticking to our, our knitting. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, we, got, we had some luck. You know, the cost of the facilities dropped. Now, this seems like a risky endeavor for an investment firm to undertake. Well, why did you guys decide to take that leap? Okay. Um, you know, I've been in the investing business for a, lo a long time. Yeah. And uh, there's risk in virtually anything. There's mm -hmm. risk in building a skyscraper. Yep. Um, you know, great businesses like my kid's favorite company, Marvel, okay. uh, went bankrupt. Uh, General Motors went bankrupt. So the key for us is to find situations where the perceived risk is much greater than the actual risk. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the S-Power um, situation was that was the case. Yeah. There was a lot of perceived risk. There wasn't a lot of actual risk. Think about, if somebody said to you, build a skyscraper mm -hmm. and we'll have a tenant that'll sign a 20-year deal and the tenant will be A-rated 
you're taking literally no risk. And that's what we did. We built out horizontal skyscrapers, solar farms with 20-year yeah. tenants um, with good credit. Wow. That's an amazing model to go by. So creating, um, you know, despite S Power success, excuse me, um, haven't many companies in the space kind of seen a little bit of that turmoil that's been taking place in energy? You know, specifically, I think <coughs> about, um, you know, Sun Edison and the bankruptcy there. When mm -hmm. you think about companies who are getting hit hard, what do you guys take into consideration when you think about some of these landmark deals and how you really continue to grow that brand and that company as well? Really good question. Unfortunately, there have been some very large missteps mm -hmm. in the renewable space. Yeah. And you're going to see that in any new emerging industry, yeah. in particular with a company like a Sun Edison mm -hmm. or Abengoa, um, I think that there were a couple of errors that everybody can learn from. Number one is far too much leverage. Mm -hmm. And when you have an emerging industry, having a conservative capital structure is really key. Right. Number two, sticking to your knitting. Uh, Edison and others went on um, big, big buying sprees, which then just added to the risk. So you had the financial risk of the leverage, sure. and then you had operating risk of how do we integrate all these very different businesses with different cultures, right. which made it uh, difficult. I think those lessons have been learned, mm -hmm. and I would imagine on a go forward, you're going to see more conservative capital structures so and approaches. Do, I guess, do you think that buying spree then also kind of weighed into how investor, the, the, the investor sentiment around that particular brand? And is that something that we're going to have to continue to see a lot of energy companies out there really put into focus? You know, if they're going to continue making some of those acquisitions, are investors going to have a little bit, be a little bit more timid to, you know, rate <coughs> this a solid buy? buy or a solid investment going forward? Another good question. Well, I think that's why S the S-Power investment is so important. Mm -hmm. I think we, we've shown the markets yeah. that you could build a huge, super profitable business and create a ton of jobs. Right. You know, we, I think we employed almost 3,000 people last year on our, on wow. our project. Yeah. So if you do things the right way, yeah. um, I think there's plenty of money to make, and I think that's the big takeaway that hopefully the uh, public investors and capital markets will, will take. Absolutely. Now, taking into account your, your experience in this, in this sector as well um, and other areas of renewable energy, what do you think about renewable energy moving forward then? Okay. Um, I think it's going to grow a lot. Yeah. It, it's, it's not just tomorrow's industry. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's today's, and there's three things driving it. Okay. Um, number one is cost. The cost of solar installs in the past 20 years has dropped by 90%. Oh, wow. That's Gordon Moore's law from Intel, you know, the Moore's law of <laughs> reduction, yep. reduced cost and increased efficiencies. Absolutely. And so it's at the point now that it, it can compete mm -hmm. with other forms of, uh, of fossil fuel um, supported electricity. That's number one. Number two, the states. Let's take our state here, Cuomo. Uh, he's putting in a, a target of 50% renewable energy, and that's going to drive tremendous growth here right in our own state. You've got the same thing in, Cali in California. So you have state and local initiatives mm -hmm. uh, that are going to drive growth. And then finally, corporations. So corporations, right. I'm going to look around here. I don't see those names, but Apple, Microsoft. Oh, they're listed here. For sure. Apple, Microsoft, <laughs> Google, yeah. Amazon, Walmart are all now requiring that their, their, their companies are going to be mm -hmm. powered by clean energy. Wow. And at S-Power, we're getting uh, approaches from them to build two, three, four, five hundred million dollar renewable facilities to power them. So wow. that's going to be a, just on the corporate side, free market side, yeah. well north of a hundred billion dollar opportunity. Wow. That, and th those are huge deals when you think about some of those companies and their global footprint as well. Absolutely. Outside of the U.S. because this is not only a technology that could be leveraged here. It's something that we can take to other places that have a large amount of, of area and territory where we can really expand upon. And I think we put up some of the graphics and the, the pictures from your website earlier um, and, and show kind of the scope of the projects that you guys are working yeah. on. So it's, it's, it's definitely beyond point. U.S. You'll, you'll see international multinationals yeah. are going to be doing this and many of the companies i mentioned are multinationals so it's an excellent go. point it's going to help drive the growth definitely so when you think about the new administration's focus because you bring up fossil fuels a moment ago um what do you think about their focus how that might have an impact on the re renewable energy sector as well got it well i i look at the new administration and say they they have highlighted two things they want to achieve mm -hmm. jobs yeah. two big things and national security 
clean energy and energy efficiency are at the top of the list of those. So let's take an example. Okay. So um, S Power, 3,000 people in three years. Mm -hmm. The overall renewable clean tech industry employs 600,000. Okay. Energy efficiency about two million. So two and a half million growing 15, 20% per year. It's, it's the future. Yeah. Now compare that to coal. You've got 80,000 people in our country employed in the coal industry. It's 3% of renewables and efficiency, and it's declining. Mm -hmm. So the future for jobs is this industry. And China, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the new administration likes to talk about China. Right. China came out with a mind-blowing announcement one month ago. What was that? Chinese government said, we are going to invest $360 billion wow. in the next three years mm -hmm. in clean energy and energy efficiency. So China is saying, this is where the jobs are. So right. hopefully the, admi the, uh, the Trump administration will recognize that mm -hmm. and not lose this opportunity right. to this great new industry. National security is the other big uh, piece of this. Um, Ted Koppel, mm -hmm. one of the great journalists, just wrote a book called Lights Out about how um, vulnerable the energy grid is to cyber attacks. Really? Us losing power in New York, we could, power could go out and we could be out for not days, hmm. uh, but to potentially months. By bringing in renewables and what's called distributed energy, you're able to reduce the risk of cyber attacks on the grid pretty dramatically. So I think that's something also the administration hopefully will start to, to focus on. That's interesting because when we have a cybersecurity discussion, we always focus so much on this idea that somebody's going to hack into your computer and steal all of your financial data or all of you know your passwords to get into something else. But there's so much that can go wrong if somebody simply powers down our whole grid, our whole infrastructure. Powers down our whole grid. Here's right. the scary thing. You know, uh, much of our grid relies on what are called large power transformers. Right. And some of these could take up to six months to replace. So wow. we have not seen it yet, um, but there, <coughs> it's a fantastic book. Mm -hmm. Check it out. It's called Lights Out. Um, and it's about what we need to do to increase our, our national security by focusing on uh, on improving the grid and renewables is clearly at the top of the list of helping us do that. Absolutely. And, and when we think about renewables too, jumping back to the coal side of things, you know, there aren't as many health impacts as there would be as if we were employing more people in the coal industry. There's That's right. You don't have to worry about asthma. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about rivers. You don't have to worry about all the associated pollutants. Um, you don't have to worry about extraction, uh, uh, damaging forests. You don't have to worry about fighting wars to pull fossil fuel from right. dangerous places. You don't have to worry about giving people that you don't like, who don't like our country, money for their products. So there's a lot of benefits to it. Absolutely. So what do you see as the next big area of opportunity in this sector, just sure. before we wrap? I see, um, I see three areas. Okay. Uh, number one is batteries. As I alluded to, that's, that's a game changer hmm. because when the beautiful sunny day ends today, you want to still be able to get that solar power. Right. Uh, Tesla's building a giant facility in Nevada. Yep. I think you're going to see the costs go down. Battery, battery costs have dropped by 50% in the past five years. They're going wow. to go down some more. So batteries is number one. Okay. Number two is smart buildings and smart buildings and smart homes. In what so, way smart? Okay, so here's an example. 40% yeah. of our energy use is to heat and cool buildings. Okay. Okay. So if we can come up with ways to reduce that use, we will save a lot of money, we'll make buildings worth more, homes worth more. Sure. So you can have situations where your home, when you're not there, mm -hmm. the thermostat goes down automatically because there's a utility mm -hmm. that wants to supply power somewhere else because everybody's turned their computers on, right. okay? Or your lights dim uh, a little bit, mm -hmm. your heating drops a little bit, all connected to a Nest-like uh, Nest -like device. So the yeah. Internet of Things mm -hmm. will help Utilities interact with homeowners and building owners to save lots of money. Um, and I think it'll make things like Nest look like the Model T <laughs> in about five years, the way things get controlled. Absolutely. Third would be uh, energy efficiency and retrofitting our nation. So right. as I mentioned, 40% of our, our energy expenditures to heat and cool buildings. Right. Um, there's a great new uh, way to finance retrofits. Uh, I helped get an NGO started called Pace Nation. Okay. And that industry is growing by leaps and bounds where they're providing the money yeah. for you to put insulation in your home or put a solar panel on or, wow. or put a new boiler in if you're living in, in Rochester, New York. Yeah. This, wet, this industry has gone from zero mm -hmm. um, five years ago to doing about $5 billion this year. Okay. It's growing 
per year, they've employed about 30,000, uh, created about 30,000 new jobs, and I think there's a good chance mm -hmm. that within a few years you'll see some public companies based upon PACE retrofit finance, and they may be sitting right here with you talking about yeah. their, their businesses. Absolutely, and, and so when we throw in kind of the tax benefit side of things too, are there significant tax benefits to implement, implementing some of these changes as we've seen with you know, some of the buildings that will say go green and you know, put um, you know, a garden on, on top of their roof or something just for the tax cut? You know, if we're considering that it's going to be a significant change and provide benefit to the city that we live in and operate in, you know, do, are, are a lot of companies going to see a lot of those tax benefits as well? Well, tell, tell you the, big, the, big, the biggest tax benefits. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest tax benefits come from job creation. Yeah. So, you know, PACE is an example. So the Republicans love PACE mm -hmm. because it's not a federal program. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's not a handout. It's done by the states. It's done locally. It's being driven by entre entrepreneurs. It's creating jobs. It's improving uh, energy security. And it's raising tax revenues. So um, I think that a lot of these industries I'm talking about mm -hmm. are, are, are revenue raising, which sure. is great. You know, currently you do have some subsidies in the, uh, in the solar and renewable area. So if mm -hmm. you put panels on your house or, I, or, or we build a giant field, there is, there is a small tax subsidy. Those would be going away in the next two to three years at the okay. federal level. Right. And uh, by then, uh, renewables will be competing hand-to-hand uh, -hand against any other form because the costs have come down so oh, much. Absolutely. Just before we wrap, We've got a large audience of millennials who may be viewing here today who maybe want to dive into the renewable energy space. What piece of advice would you give them to you know, kind of keep them going um, and inspire them, uh, to, you know, that next generation of ambitious leaders, if you will? Yeah, um, you know, I, I would say that there's a number of institutions that will keep them plugged into what's going on. Sure. Uh, Rocky Mountain Institute is always a, a visionary place, so I would I'd get on their websites and, and see what's what's going on with them. Okay. And I'd probably stay uh, stay on top of what's going on in, in energy efficiency, mm -hmm. like PACE and other ways to benefit from it. Definitely. And probably the millennials more than anybody can use the internet of things. So yes. make your apartment a smart apartment, make right. your home a smart home, right. and uh, do your bit on saving yourself money yep. and reducing our nation's reliance on, on, uh, on energy consumption. I've never met anybody that doesn't want to save themselves money, so. <laughs> We'll leave, it, we'll leave it on that point. Great to have you here, Jeff. Thanks so and much for having certainly me. Certainly a pleasure to discuss this topic, which we don't get to cover all the time. So definitely great to have your insights on that. Thanks for being Super. here. Super, thanks. Absolutely. And thank all of you for watching live on Facebook. Stay tuned for more coming from the NASDAQ market site throughout the rest of the day.